These health headlines, a recent study is revealing certain types of cancers are becoming more common in young people. According to statistics released by the American Cancer Society, it found cancer rates in women under 50 are now 82% higher than men, which was up 51% in 2002. And one forecast predicts cancer for this age group will increase 30% globally from 2019 to 2030. So joining me now is Dr. Natasha Bouillon with, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the National Medical Director of One Medical. Mm -hmm. You know, this reading this, it was so startling to right. me. I can't believe that, you know, it's one thing to see these rates rise, but exponentially like that. Why yeah. is that? Yeah, I mean, there's several trends that we're seeing. So we know that we broke a record number of cancer cases in 2024 with over 2 million. And in 2025, we're predicted to have even more. Now, part of that is because of better screening and detection. But another part of that is people are just actually having more cancers. The most alarming trend to me is that we are seeing more cancers in people under the age of 50. Yeah. There's 14 different cancers that are climbing, largest increases in colon cancer and in breast cancer. Now, the good news is that overall survival from cancer is improving because our treatments are more targeted, they're better, but then we are also seeing mortality and death in certain types of cancer, like oral cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic, that's actually worsening. And so we've got trends in both directions that are somewhat concerning. And apparently there's a new study that was just released on another cancer? Yeah, you know, related to colon cancer. And so this is so interesting because colon cancer is getting a lot of attention. In the past two decades, colon cancer under the age of 55 has doubled. And wow. so scientists know it's likely due to the gut microbiome. Something is going on. There was a new study that was just released and it found that people who have a history of an E. coli infection in their gut, a certain strain, mm. it releases a toxin. And that toxin is likely doing some DNA damage at the cellular level, kind of laying the groundwork for people to develop cancer decades later and people in the study they were found to have this infection really early even in childhood so we know that infections in the gut might be increasing our rates of cancer but there's other things too it's also antibiotic overuse right. that can disrupt the gut flora and eating ultra processed foods I was, gonna, I, I was thinking it has to have something to do with the foods yeah that we're and in particular like when people have a diet that's high in red meat and salt but then low in fiber and so I think colon cancer in particular is getting a lot of attention because there's multiple reasons that it's increasing. And also lack of exercise. And we were talking earlier yeah. during the break, sleep. Right. And so I think people know, like when we think about cancer risk, a lot of people know that alcohol, smoking, you know, obesity, all of that increases your cancer risk. I think the things people don't think about, it's related to sleep. Mm -hmm. So we know if people have poor quality sleep or disrupted sleep, we are seeing higher rates of cancer. And scientists think because sleep actually impacts our immune system, it impacts our hormones, our inflammation. And so I think what I've seen is a trend of people are just not sleeping yeah. really well the last several decades. And so we're seeing that increase. I think in addition to potentially environmental toxins, genetics, but also there are people who are healthy mm -hmm. and they're kind of doing everything right. We're still seeing cancer in that group as well. Wow. That's what has scientists really puzzled. And so a lot more research is needed. Yeah, that's disturbing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what can people do? Yeah, this is really important. So of course, I tell people, stay up to date on your cancer screenings, mm -hmm. see your primary care doctor and know your family history because you know, if you know your family history, you know that you might need to get screened at a younger age right. if you're at higher risk. And then of course, there's other things like eating healthy, you know, fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. exercise size is interesting. I think a lot of people feel like it's unattainable, yeah. but really even just four and a half minutes of bursts of exercise, just oh. four and a half minutes in a day reduces your cancer risk. Yeah. So just avoid being sedentary. So trying to exercise um, and then of course not ignoring any new symptoms. So mm. if you have something out of the ordinary, it might seem mild to you, even something like bloating, right. make sure you follow up with a primary care doctor because something that seems mild, it could be serious and it's worth investigating. Yeah, and out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary, exactly. All right, Natasha, great advice. Thank you so very Thanks much. Thanks again.